In this video I'm going to be describing how to replace the hard drive or the RAM in this Gateway LT4004U netbook computer. Now despite what I've heard from the Best Buy rep that this particular netbook is rather popular, that source can't be verified and despite the claim, I can't find too many resources online that tell me how to get to the RAM or the hard drive in it. The manual states that they are under this panel back here, but there are no screws and it doesn't just pop off. Well, I did some poking around and discovered how to get in there, so that's what I'm going to show you. Now as far as I'm aware, Best Buy is selling these computers with 1 gig of RAM, Windows 7 Starter Edition, and a 250 gig hard drive, but that 250 gig hard drive rating can be increased after you uninstall all those Gateway and Best Buy's bloatware applications. This computer actually has a 320 gig hard drive in it. I discovered this when I went to its properties and under hardware it is a Toshiba MK3259GSXP hard drive. Look up this model number on Google and you'll see it's a 320 gig drive. So something to keep an eye out for. Alright, to get started, go ahead and shut it down, pull the plug, and pull the battery. Okay. Alright, now that we've made sure this thing can't turn itself on, because this is the battery, there's your power cable. Open her up. And the first thing you have to do here is remove the keyboard. Look down the edge here. You've got a tab here, a tab here, 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 and then a hold down right there. What you need to do is get something thin, like a little credit card maybe, and just slide it into the slot and you'll see this particular tab and the four adjacent to it slide back. This one on the end does not. We'll get to that one in a bit. Okay, it'll probably be easiest to start in the middle of the keyboard. Get your card slid up underneath it. Get something under right there so it'll hold it in place. Slide your card and lift her up just like that then you've got your last pin over here oh it already came loose how about that this may be a little easier than I thought okay <laughs> now that your keyboard is off the board just lift up on this ribbon retainer and there you have it and here you can see your hard drive perfect all right notice there it says door right next to the screw two three four and five pull those screws and that releases this bottom plate magnetic screwdriver makes it really work wonders for doing that okay as you're looking at this from the front Come down here, and right by the hard drive, you'll see this. Door release. You will probably want to try to push that with a flat blade screwdriver. And watch, because that is part of the door. There you go. Now... Just keep on pulling it. Don't worry too much because you're not likely to break anything. And now you have access to the RAM, which is here. Your wireless card, which is here. It looks like a micro mini PCI Express. <laughs> and your hard drive. Upgrade them at will. Also, you want to clean out your CPU fan that's right over here 
And it looks like you can just pull a screw to get to the actual heat sink, but I am not going to cover that in this video. To replace laptop RAM, you need to pull these tabs so that the card will pop up. It does so automatically. Pull it out, and then you're ready to install the new card. Okay, there's your RAM. It is keyed. You can only insert it in one direction. As you can see, the slot here is keyed as well. Take your RAM, push it down into the slot, and push it down until you hear those snap and see those fall into place and this thing doesn't spring back up again. Real easy. A little reminder, like I said, I do not know the maximum capacity of the DDR3 RAM you can put into this thing, but 2 gig is what Gateway says is the maximum, so it's your choice. Next, I'm going to show how to pull and replace the hard drive. Just pull up very gently. Pull the data and power connector. And that is so freaking easy. As you can see, MK3259GSXP. <laughs> the model number on Windows 7 does not lie. And I do not have a new hard drive for this thing either, so I'm just going to reinstall this one. Add the data and power connection. And gently push it in. Good to go. Okay, to pull your wireless card, you first have to remove the wires that go to the antennas. They just come off, no big deal. You can pull them out of the way if you'd like. Makes it easier to get to them. Notice, this card is held down by a screw. Remove it. The card should pop up as soon as the tension is off the screw. Then you just come in and pull it out of the slot. Fairly simple. You'll notice also that this card is keyed as well. You can only put it in one way. Same there. So, we put the card in at about a 35 to 45 degree angle. Push it in until it won't go anymore. Don't force it though. Grab your screw and Hope you have a magnetic screwdriver because that makes a whole heck of a lot of difference. Get it started in the hole, push down the card, and screw it in. There you go. Get your wires, and they just snap on. Should not be difficult at all. And there you have it, now you're ready to put the back plate back on. Note, on this back plate, this is the front. This is the back, which is underneath your battery compartment. They correspond to these two tabs. These two tabs kind of stick out a little bit. So, you have to be careful putting this thing back together because these tabs have to go into these slots before you push it down. But it's really not hard to do because of how short the tabs are. So, you get it down there, clean it up a little bit, <laughs> and start pressing around the outside edges. If you have any difficulty doing that, pull it back off and check everything. Don't take anything for granted, because you might have a problem later if you do. And now you can open up the lid, and we're ready to put these screws back in. And now you're ready to put the keyboard back on. This can be somewhat tricky because this cable is not very long. You don't have a whole lot to work with when you put it in the retainer. So, okay, make sure your retainer clip is flipped up like so take your keyboard pull the ribbon cable down 
and do your very best to slide it all the way in to this retainer. This is all you should see of the ribbon cable before you take this connector and flip it down. If your keyboard does not work after you get your computer back together, that is probably the reason. Now, go back in and start pushing down on the edges. Get this sucker snapped back into place. And that is it. Reinstall your battery. Flip your tab closed. Flip your retainer closed. Plug in your power supply. And give her a run up. We have success. Now for a couple of disclaimers. I am not a registered technician of any computer systems or analysis or anything like that. This information in this video is to be used at your own risk and if any damage occurs to your computer, it is not my fault and I take no responsibility for it. That said, I do welcome any comments pertaining to this model of laptop. I make no guarantees that this specific method will work with any other brand, make, or model of laptop. So please don't ask me if something will work because I do not know. That's just all there is to it. Anyway, hope this video was helpful for you and I will see you in the next one.